<laughs> from the shores of Malibu, where the waves are pumping, to the Great Wall of China, and back to the streets of Las Vegas, where the UFC is coming. We are live. This is It's Time Radio, the show where we talk about what you think about but may be afraid to voice. Do not worry. We'll voice it for you. We talk about everything on It's Time. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, UFC, politics, entertainment, you name it. I'm here today with my co-host, TJ DeSantis. TJ, another week gone by, week of life. Um, everything good? Oh, things are great, Puff. How are you? I'm good. I celebrated my birthday on Tuesday. I know. Now you're 50. Congrats. Yeah, 50. I'll take it. Nope, nope. 67, boys. 67. Hit the big 6-7. So all good. But, I mean, what better to celebrate my birthday than with my co-host and partner, TJ DeSantis, of 16, 17, 18 years? I can't keep track anymore. I think you were actually 50 when we started the show. No lie. Yeah, so 16, 17 years now. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Where's that Joe Rogan money when I think about 17 years with a podcast? Think of it doing something right or something wrong. I'm just kidding. All good. All good. Eddie Bravo, always a pleasure to have you on. Celebrate my birthday week with the amazing Eddie Bravo, the champion trainer, the jiu-jitsu master, the man who knows it all, seen it all, done it all, and more to come with more to do and everything else. Speaking of Joe Rogan and the podcast, Eddie Bravo has been with Joe Rogan on that podcast since day one, right, Eddie? Since day one, yes. Yes, happy day birthday. One. Happy birthday, Bruce. Hey, thank you, Eddie. I appreciate it very much. Thank Is today you. Is your actual birthday? May 21st. What's Tuesday. Next? Tuesday. So next Tuesday. Yeah, last Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Oh, last Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, okay. May, so, May 21st, Eddie. May bir- 21st. You do birthday weeks, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, you know, I, I think the trick to enjoying a birthday, you never know what the day of the birthday is going to be like, is to celebrate like a week before to a week after and just have a good time. But actually, at this point, celebrate every day you wake up, put two feet on the ground, stand up, and walk to the bathroom. <laughs> all good all kidding aside eddie you got a lot going on as usual hey first off before we get into the uh ebi jiu-jitsu everything going on in your life comedy work what's going on with your comedy work I, it's you know i i am not a full-time comic i'm a part-time comic you, you, you might not even consider me a comic because a real comic goes out every night you know or almost every night Oh, like right. jujitsu. Comedy's like jujitsu. You got to go out there and practice, and you got to spar and, and work on new stuff every night. And unfortunately, I can't ever live that life because I teach jujitsu at night. So um, I go out. Uh, me and Sam Tripoli, we do tin foil hat comedy night. We go across the country. We got um, Connecticut coming up uh, in uh, like June, late June. Con- we're, me and Sam Tripoli are going to be in Connecticut, and we're also going to be in New Jersey. Um, God, I wish I had the goddamn dates on me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I go out once a month. Me and Sam will hit a couple cities. And then I'll do, like, one spot uh, a month or two locally. So I'm barely going out there. So um, I'm, yeah, barely, you're still, I'm, you're, you're, I'm barely. You're still coming. staying active, though. You're still yeah, staying yeah, active. Bro. I've been consistent like that since, um, you know, for the last seven years. That's how I've been doing it. We go out once a month. Um, we could go out every weekend. He does. He goes out, but I can't. You know, I I got a my my son's twelve now. He's super into baseball. There's baseball tournaments every weekend, so I can't be going out every weekend uh, doing stand up. I, I just can't do it. But once a month is good, you know. And then once a month I'll do a seminar, a jujitsu seminar, and then you know we'll do. Um, then I'll also go out and do uh, combat jujitsu worlds, or or EBI or Medusa. And we got EBI, the 10th, 10th year anniversary show coming up um, June 2nd in Austin, Texas. And June 1st, we're going to have our first ever EBI Open. You know, just like uh, IBJJF, just uh, uh, our first EBI Open. That's going to be June 1st in Austin as well. So go out, compete. And then on Sunday, go watch EBI uh, the Absolute's 10-year anniversary show. You know, we got Giancarlo Bodoni. We got Big Ben Manasu. We got Ryan Aiken, two-time combat jiu-jitsu world's champion, Ryan Aiken. Um, Amir Alam. We got, it's going to be awesome. So uh, that's June 1st, EBI Open. June 2nd, EBI on UFC Fight Pass. The Absolute. Very cool. All in Austin. Very- Make it a road trip to Austin. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. Go to ebiofficial.com to register for the EBI Open. 
Very cool. You know, 10th anniversary, right? 10th anniversary of 10th Planet? 10th anniversary? No, not 10th anniversary of 10th Planet, but 10th Planet, excuse me, EBI's 10th anniversary. You've been doing this 10 years now? 10 years, yes. yes. God, time flies. I mean, really, time flies. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And um, all those those shows we did at the Orpheum, you were the one, who, you were our announcer. Those are some classic That's right. moments. Bruce Buffer doing That's... EBI? Are you kidding me? You forgot about that? Did you forget? used to do that no never forgot about it because quite frankly i enjoyed ebi and and i enjoy sitting back on the sidelines watching the matches i thoroughly even more so enjoy the combat jujitsu i love the open hand slaps hell yeah yeah you like yeah. it huh? <laughs> i like it oh i love it i love it i think it's great it gives a real edge of bravado to the whole to the whole thing for sure no question yeah, it, makes it, it makes it a little uh, more realistic and yeah uh, and you get punished for doing unrealistic jujitsu Right. <laughs> it keeps it real. Keep it real. Keep it real. But also, you know, we're so used to watching UFC and everything. It just makes it that much more entertaining for the active eye, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's the only way, you know, because the, the greatest UFC of all time was UFC 2. That was a 16-man tournament. And were you yep. announcing? Did you announce UFC 2? No, 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 no. I was watching UFC 2. I uh, My first uh, UFC I attended was UFC 6 in okay. Casper, Wyoming, when I had Michael, my brother, announce it. My first one was UFC 8 in Bayamon, Puerto Rico, February 1996, uh, where I did the prelims. And then my first full show was UFC 10. Then I did uh, UFC uh, 13 and then didn't stop from that point forward. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit of history there. Like Over 28 you? years, Eddie. Just celebrated 28 years in February. That's amazing, man. And it's, it's super awesome, you know, hearing your voice announcing for my show. You know, EBI, like oh. hearing your voice, it's like, it just puts a stamp of legitimacy on it. You know what I mean? I appreciate that, Eddie. Thanks very much. Sincerely, I really appreciate that. I love working with you no matter what we do together. Too many years, Eddie. We've been through too much together, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Let me go now, into uh, some U some USC stuff, Eddie. I want to get your opinion on a couple things, okay? Uh, first off, we got a match here. You know, it's funny. I saw Terry Crews, the actor, saying he was going to fight um anderson silva he was going to box him uh june 15th but it's actually anderson silva and chael sonnen are having a boxing match interesting that's uh, interesting I, I, i'd watch that i'm not really I'd a giant i'm not a giant boxing fan to be honest i mean i'll watch like the big fights and lately boxing has been a little more interesting i used to be balls deep into boxing i was a boxing encyclopedia i had stacks and stacks of boxing magazine ring magazine i would never throw them away i was all into the you know when, when you're it, when it comes to boxing it's totally fine and okay to be racist like i was all mexican out white people go for the white people black people go for the black people mexicans always go for the mexicans you're never gonna in boxing it's totally okay to be racist and soccer too uh but everything else you know mma you can't look at it like that <laughs> but um, MMA is a, to, MMA is a universal demographic of fans. They're for everybody. Yeah. With MMA, its style is thicker than blood. Like, I don't give a shit if a guy's Mexican at all in MMA. All I care about how good your jiu-jitsu is. That's all I care about. You know, I, I like striking. Right. I, I like striking, but, you know, once I saw UFC 2, I was like, dude, I, I threw all my boxing magazines away. I just completely, ju you know, jumped ship. I was like, fuck this. UFC is like... You could fight on the ground. I thought fighting on the ground was for pussies. I, I didn't know you could fight on the ground. I thought fighting always had to be on on your feet. And uh, I wrestled in high school. And whenever I would get in a fight in high school, um, I didn't think I was fighting. I, I was a pussy. Everybody knew I was a pussy. I would just take dudes down and hold them down and like hit, hold them inside control until the principal broke us up. I was like, I was a total pussy. I that's how I fought. I would double leg dudes and hold them down. So I thought I was cheating. I thought I was being a pussy, and I didn't care. I didn't have a reputation to uphold of being some badass. I was like, yo, I'm just not going to get hurt. I'm going to take a dude down, hold him, pretend I'm punching his stomach, and then uh, hopefully someone pulls us apart and saves my ass. But then you see UFC 2, and they're fighting on the ground. Like, you can fight on the ground? Oh, my God. Oh, shit. I didn't know you could fight on the ground. Oh, my God. Uh, that changes it, everything. Made a big difference. You know, every street fight I've ever been in pretty much – I'd say 80% of them, they all go to the ground really, really quick. And then it's a matter of fighting dirty or doing whatever you can to survive to get out of it. But I know in high school, if I was going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody and I knew they were a wrestler, I thought twice about that. 
for sure. Because I knew as soon as they got a hold of me, I was going to have a whole another bag of works. And I never told you, Eddie, but in 1991, I was taken to the Torrance Dojo of uh, Horace Gracie by a famous director, producer in Hollywood named John Milius, who did Conan the Barbarian, Red Dawn, and a bunch of films. And I was kickboxing a lot back then. And Hoist came out when we got in there, introduced himself to me, and immediately took me into one of his private rooms for the little Gracie Challenge routine, right? Closed the door, looked at me, said, hey, I understand you're a kickboxer. Come at me. Take my head off, right? So I said, we're all alone. I said, want we put on some gloves? He goes, no, let's just do this, right? And I was game, so I went at him. 45 seconds later, let's give or take 10 seconds, he had me on the ground in a side choke, right? Um, got underneath my punches the whole bit. He goes, tap, tap, tap. And I tapped, and I'll never forget it, uh, Eddie. He sits up in the guard, straightens out his gi, and looks at me and goes, see, isn't it nice not to get hit in the face? Like that, right? <laughs> Yo, there you, you had, you were Hoist Gracie. You, were, you, you could have been in a Gracie in action. What if, you, what if they put you in that shit? What if they secretly videotaped you and put you in Gracie in action? <laughs> uh, you never know. What I, I'll tell you my biggest regret, I lived over an hour away from his dojo, and the big thing is he wanted me to train with him. And I really, I, one of the biggest regrets in life, Eddie, is I didn't train and start training jits with Hoist back in 91. Because God knows what, you know, I'd probably be teaching at your place by now, you know? Nice, nice. <laughs> the, the, the kids' classes. Exactly, exactly. Uh, well, anyway, uh, all kidding is uh, we, we got another fight. We got another two fights I want to get your opinion on. Um, coming up, obviously, the Jake Paul Mike Tyson uh, match July July 20th. Speaking of boxing, interest you at all? Oh, yes. Are you kidding? Mike Tyson? Old Mike Tyson versus, uh, I mean, it's fucking a great matchup. I love it. Right? Because, like, prime Mike Tyson against Jake Paul. Come on, man. That would, you know. But no, forget it. That would end. He is end almost. Quickly. He is almost sixty. So damn, maybe like we're gonna find out. Is he? Is he too old? Is he? Uh, was he able to get back in shape and be all motivated? It looks like he's super motivated. It looks like he's in shape. But is is, is it uh, not enough? That motivation and and, and all that uh, enthusiasm is that not enough because of the age? We're gonna find out. I love. I love the matchup. I love it. Can't wait. We'll find out. I, I spoke to him a few weeks ago. He's he's very serious, Eddie. He's not taking this lightly. He's and then really the people serious. like, oh no, I'm not into it. He's so old. I'm not into no. it. He's no. so dying. Shut the fuck. Like you care about, uh, uh, like oh, he's just too old. He's gonna mess his brain up. Dude, dude was in like 30 wars in his life. You know what I mean? He didn't care back then. Oh, but he's old now. He's fine. He's Once a fighter, always a fighter. And uh, prediction, and nothing against Jake Paul, because I think he's doing a lot of good bringing young eyeballs to the sport of boxing, no matter what the influence or set of fights or whatever you want to call him that he's having or not. But he's definitely drawing attention. And I, boxing is a great sport. It's apples and oranges compared to mixed martial arts. Prediction? Three uh, rounds. I, I, say, I, say, I say Tyson knocks him out in three rounds. Uh, man, it's hard to say. It's, it's, really it's hard just, to say. It, it's really, is Mike Tyson too old? Is he too old, or is is he, um, is he does he still have the power to knock out a young lion? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's a toss up. I'm for sure rooting for Tyson. I mean, how could you not root for Tyson? You can't but, help but not uh, root for Tyson. Yeah. But Jake Jake Paul's legit. I mean, people are like you know they're they're figuring it out now. At first, it was like ah, oh, this is some YouTuber, but he's legit, man. That guy can. No, box. he's legit. He's legit. I mean, is he a high quality boxer? That's always up for question. But he's totally legit. His approach to everything else. I got nothing against Jake Paul. I'm yeah. friends with his brother Logan. You know, more power to him. They're definitely pulling down the cash, definitely pulling down the money. And again, bringing boxing to the eyeballs of the young, whether it, it makes them watch the other boxing events or not, that's a whole other story. But uh, may the best man win. I'm just saying, if Tyson's going to win, it's going to be in the first three rounds when he comes out like an animal. We'll see. The <laughs> last you thing you lose in life is your power, Eddie. The last yeah. thing you lose is your power. But. Right? The first thing you lose is your chin. Is your what? Your chin. Yes. That goes first. Yes. Very true. Um, uh, so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But um, do you think it's going to be a full-blown, 100% legit, uh, balls-to-the-walls type boxing match? Or do you think they had some, you know, uh, do they, they, like, seek, like a secret deal? Like, uh, you know, don't knock me out. Let's just make that money. Don't get hurt. Let's just make that money. Don't get crazy. 
you know. Well, what in do you think? that question, it, what I think is, is first off, what has been put down, unless they've changed it again, we've got 16-ounce gloves, okay? Who does that benefit? Actually, I think that benefits Mike Tyson. Second, we've got two-minute rounds. Again, unless it's been changed, who does that benefit? Again, I think that benefits Mike Tyson. Yeah. Third, we've got no judges. It's a knockdown, only win fight. In other words, there's no commission, no judges. So it's called, or I don't know about the commission, but there may be a commission, but there's no judges, and the only way to win is by a knockout. Otherwise, it's a draw. I like that. I love, I yeah, love I that. Like, I love that. So love that it. in itself tells me that they're going to go for it. If they're going to dance around and play with each other, we're going to see that right away in the first two rounds. Guys, have we forgot that it's Mike Tyson in there? It doesn't matter if you have a gentleman's agreement. If you piss that dude off, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're yeah. right. He don't give a fuck. He bites ears off. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, okay. I think that day's gone by a little bit, but it's not that he's not capable. Once a warrior, always a warrior. So we'll see what happens there. Dallas Stadium. God knows the amount of money. And it's amazing, though, Eddie, when you think about it. Netflix. What a smart move on their part. You can watch this fight for free if you're a Netflix subscriber. But how many people are going to now subscribe to Netflix to watch the fight? And supposedly it's been reported, and who knows if this is true or not, Tyson, 20 or more million guaranteed. Uh, Jake Paul putting it together, who knows, 30, 40 million, whatever the case might be. The numbers are ex extravagant. Next, next uh, bout I want to talk about, Chandler and Connor. Give me your take. Man, that could go either way. I mean, um, shit. They both got... Um, Lots of power. And what weight are they doing that at? 70. Uh, 170, welterweight, right? Oh. Connor's going to, like, that. you know, that's both, both of them are going up in weight. So, you know, you could say, oh, Connor's going to be slower. But you could say that about Chandler. They're both 55ers. Um, but Connor was a 45er for a while. But um, I don't know, man. But it's going to be an amazing match. I don't know. Predicting fights is just like. You're just guessing. I don't know. Uh, I I have no idea. Someone's going to get knocked out, though. I guarantee that. I don't um, see the fight going five rounds, I'll tell you that. Yeah, someone's going to get fucked up. Yeah. And I when you watch the training videos, like Chandler's training videos, oh, my gosh, you're training like an animal. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Over $20 million at the gate, Eddie. Connor brings it to the table. Biggest Where's that going to be at? Where's it, where's it going to be at? At that T-Mobile? It's a T-Mobile. It's T-Mobile. Tickets, the bottom line ticket, the floor tickets, the uh, face value for floor tickets is $3,505. Highest price I've ever seen a UFC ticket for. That God. means the scalpers are going to be moving those for 5, 10, 15, 20 grand each, you know, close up. Damn. Is it sold out already? Uh, it's already done over $20 million in ticket sales. Biggest ever. Wow. So That's I have to say, yes, it's sold out. It's in the scalper's hands at this point. Damn. Damn. Uh, Connor's stronger than ever. Uh, ever. <laughs> ever. I mean, look at it. He came out. Oh, by the way, Eddie, okay, speaking of Connor, did you see Roadhouse? No, I didn't see it. Oh, really? Oh, I'd love was to there, was there, was it. Did they have a bunch of woke shit in it? No, it's the, the, the remake. <laughs> it's the remake of the Patrick. Yeah, they, they'll take a remake and uh, shove a bunch of bullshit down people's throats. They have no problem doing that. Um, uh, you know what? It's just a romp for two hours. Connor steals the show. Not much really? depth. In he's, yeah, he's, Connor does a good, good job. He's a good actor and everything? He's Connor. He just plays. Yeah, he doesn't really need to act. His character is Connor, pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty much Connor. That's Connor, awesome. you know, Connor personified. That's awesome, man. <laughs> I'll yeah. go check when, it out. When, I'll go check it out. They don't have when are we gonna get a, when are we gonna get a real jujitsu movie? I think there are a couple. I think uh, not really. Like there's that Red Belt movie that. David oh, you know Mamet what? There movie. is a movie coming out. There is a movie coming out on the story of Maeda, and then the story of Hickson. It was going to be one movie. It was going to be because Maeda, Maeda was uh, like the first Hickson. He's a J Japanese judo guy, uh, judo jujitsu guy from uh, uh, Kano's karate or uh, judo, and he went all over the world. And challenge people. He was doing that shit like in in the early 1900s. 
That's a great story. The Maeda story, that's being worked on. It's going to be a big movie. And they decided to make two different movies. One on Maeda, one, and then part two is going to be the Hicks and Gracie story. Yo, and that's going to be legit. Jean-Jacques Machado is a consultant on uh, those movies. He knows the guy who's putting it together, and they're trying to make it as legit as possible. That's it, awesome. Dude, the Maeda, Maeda story, dude? Fuck. That's you know, on the, Hickson, on the Hickson story, did you guys ever hear the story about his son that was killed? Yes. Yeah, horrible. Remember, You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Details, but it was tragic and yeah, very, very tragic. I don't want to go into details. It's that tragic. Well, you guys are missing one big thing that's happening. Um, Dwayne Johnson. They started production this week. Yeah, the Smashing Machine. On the Smashing I'm, Machine. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm skeptical. I mean, like that's a that's a movie that like, I mean, I don't know how Mark Kerr is doing today, but like it doesn't have a good ending for the most part. It's kind of a sad story. So. The Rock is like this guy that does everything that's like all happy and stuff. Like, I don't know. You watch that original documentary and like it's it. They're they're tough moments. I don't know if The Rock is uh, going to do that kind of movie. Uh, if, if it's anything like The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke, that was amazing. The Wrestler was amazing. If it's done like that, like in a dark way, um, yeah. Well, let me, let, me, let me beg not to differ with you, TJ. Just to say, The Rock has proven himself. He can be a dramatic actor. He has a he has a wide range in this. They've got him made up to look like The Rock. I'd rather uh, Mark Kerr. I can see him delving into this and giving a really serious performance. I mean, listen, we know Mark Kerr. He was addicted to painkillers. Everything going but with I mean, it. What's, what's the ending of the movie? Mark Kerr getting smashed by King Mo and Memorial Hall in Kansas City. Like I don't know how that movie ends. It, it, I just don't see it being a sad movie, and that's kind of the way it needs to end. Oh, it's not going to be a lifting, happy, go lucky movie. There'll be moments. I mean, this is a biopic, so right. I just I want it to end in a proper way, not like with Mark Kerr winning the UFC heavyweight champion. What is he doing now? He's selling cars in Arizona or something? I, I don't know. Hey, is that a happy? Hey ending? guys, I got to take off. I got to teach class. Do you think, Eddie? Oh, yeah, Eddie, go get him. Boom. Ten Planet. Look at that. Go to tenplanetjj.com. Also, I just dropped an album a few months ago. Go to Spotify. Apple Music. The band is called Hook Thieves. The album is called Jar of Lies. Go check it out. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, TJ. I love you guys. Don't miss EBI. June 2nd, live on UFC Fight Pass. TJ is going to be uh, the play-by-play guy as usual, killing it with BMAC. See you guys later. Thank you. Love you. Hi, everybody. I've had an absolute blast recording your championship intros on audio and also on video. And for those of you that didn't know, the videos can be done special exactly the way you like them, because these are green screens, and we can do them with a scene behind me. Do you want a fighting scene? Do you want a beach scene? Do you want a race car scene? Any scene you want, we can give it to you. It's your theme and my pleasure. Just write our offices, and we will answer you with the exact fee involved and how it'll get done. So here we are, and now it's time, and it's your choice. Cheers. All right, Eddie Bravo. Never-ending energy, Eddie Bravo. <laughs> never-ending stop. Never-ending, never standing still, Eddie Bravo. Always moving, Eddie Bravo. Boy, he's a really busy guy. Yeah, he's like a shark. If he's not moving, he's dying. Yeah, I know. And, uh, you know, when you think about a success story and you realize when he opened up his first 10th temp- temp- Planet Jiu-Jitsu Dojo, how many of these does he have around the country? Oh, a lot. I think uh, over... Two or three hundred locations worldwide. Wow. Yeah, a lot. Wow, my business mind just kind of went crazy. So yeah, he's doing. I'm well. sorry. I'm going to do this for the thrill of defeat. Okay. Okay. Um, let's figure he gets a, a five thousand dollar licensing fee. Okay. A month. Does that sound out of out of uh, reach? I, I this is a whole thing that's way out of my league. Buff. Let's I just call two thousand dollar licensing fee. Okay. Good for Eddie. <laughs> good for Eddie. <laughs> good for Eddie. Good for Eddie. 400000 a month. Definitely. That's good. Somewhere in the vicinity. Sorry, Eddie. I had to do it. Business mind working. Not like anybody else hasn't tried to figure that out either. But good for Eddie Bravo. Um, you know, I got to say it again. EBI, if you get a chance to watch it, get a chance to see it, uh, definitely enjoy it because it's exciting stuff. I got some things to talk about here, TJ. Let's go. Uh, I was going to uh, Vegas last week for the uh, fight night um 
And then, you know, Barbosa and Murphy, which what Ooh. a fight that was, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It surprised me in a lot of ways. Surprised me in a lot of ways, too. But, um, I mean, Barbosa had, you know, held in till the end. Yeah. Took quite a beating, you know, when you see it. But so did Murphy in his own right. For sure. Definitely. For sure. He went back ways. They got the bonus. All good. Good solid night of fights. Um, the one thing, uh, the fight that ended in the headbutt. Uh-huh. You remember that? Yep. Um, she was worn twice, but I mean that had to end. They couldn't. They couldn't continue on that one. No, I agree. I agree. I think. Uh, I think the officials are doing a better job than they've ever done. To be honest with you, these days. Uh, I think you know, there's. Yeah, I really do. I think it'll. They get a tough rap, but you know, between uh, replays and multiple looks at it, it's a tough decision to be made on the fly. Buff, really tough. And uh, yeah. I think more often than not, yeah, there's always going to be some room for. Uh, criticism but for the most part they're doing what they can and i think they do a pretty good job i think they do an excellent job and i want to give credit to angela uh, hill um definitely came in lived up to her nickname overkill dominated that fight strong fight you know angela's been around a long time mm-hmm. 30 fights in the ufc yeah you know long time since her first appearance on the on the first female tough fighter show so yeah there's a success uh in the making right there and chaos williams coming out as strong as he did um, there were some good fights. You know, it's great to see these fight nights because all these upcoming fighters that we're going to see more and more and more of uh, looking excellent. Did you see the lineup for UFC 303? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, it's great. It's International Fight Week, you know, and a lot of people were wondering, like, can they put together a card that is going to be on par with UFC 300? Well, no card should ever be on par with UFC Three hundred, no, un- unless it's UFC four hundred. But right, uh, they did a great job at, at still making IFW uh, an important, exciting week. Agreed, agreed. I could go through the card, but we'll go through the card when we get closer to the show. Um, one thing: when I was in Vegas this weekend, I flew to Vegas. I was on JSX, which is a semi-private island airline that I like to use, like twenty, thirty seat planes. Mm-hmm. I it was just the LA Sparks and me. Yeah, I saw that. I saw you did a little, uh, uh, you know, pumping them up. If I you couldn't will. help it. You know, I'm sitting there in the in the in the small terminal. Yeah, they're all around. I couldn't help but pump them up. They did lose the game, right? But um, it was Andy Cohen. You know, Andy Cohen. Yep. Andy Cohen, myself, and the Sparks, and uh, really, you know, good. It was it was fun. It was fun. They're, they're a real solid team together, most definitely. Now, when I got to Vegas, they had the EDC concert. You familiar with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, electronic dance music. Wow. I mean, it's a young scene. Yeah. You know, not saying anything wrong with that. Yeah. But the outfits. Yeah, they're bright. Inc- bright, uh, revealing, you yeah. name it. Yeah. Uh, wild. Yeah. They got their uh, whole thing going on. Crazy stuff. Listen, you're in an airplane. Okay. Flying international, flying domestic. Pilot okay. says uh, we're hitting turbulence. Do you always put on your seatbelt when they tell you to? Well, I believe you're supposed to have your seatbelt belted at all times. Well, did you hear what happened on the Singapore Airlines flight? Did someone not have their seatbelt belted? At uh, all they had severe turbulence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, they were told all to put it on. The plane took a six thousand foot drop. Mm. Right, leaving one person dead mm. and over thirty hurt. Mm. And now, as a result, there's a number of people that have spinal injuries. Yeah. Were they not wearing their seatbelt? I can't say whether they were or they weren't. I mean, you I'm know, guessing you just... don't get a spinal injury if you're wearing your seatbelt. And then they probably didn't. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But now it's like you know when I when I'm on the uh, the long distance flight, like I go into Saudi Arabia or uh, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And um, I'm happy to say I can fly business class, so you get the flat seats or whatever. But I right. still keep the seatbelt on. Yeah. I've to. had times where I've actually been lifted out of the seat. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wear your seatbelt. That's the point. Yeah, I don't mess around. I'm belted in at all times. Do you hear that Elvis's Graceland Mansion is being foreclosed on? No. Yeah. Wow, that's terrible. I know. It's like a three, an outstanding three point eight million dollar loan. Was somebody living there, or is it like a museum? So I thought it was a museum where yeah. people just tour it. Yeah, I thought so too. So you know, and speaking of Graceland, I mean, they're they're auctioning off stuff. Um, his. Elvis Presley's nightstand Bible mm-hmm. is now up for auction. Mm-hmm. I think the bit, the last bit on it was thirty thousand dollars. Wow! Just for the Bible, but um, obviously there's something going something going on in Graceland. That's all yeah. I can say. 
But that was I thought that was a big tourist. Yeah, type. I thought so too. Uh, it's surprising to me. Interesting. Um, this P Diddy situation. Yeah. Do you see that video? Uh, I've not watched the video. I've heard about it. I have yeah. no interest in looking at it. Just more and more. Now he's being uh, another lawsuit hitting him from the former winner of MTV's Model Mission, and mm. you know he's come on. He's publicly apologized and such as that. But uh, what does that do? You know what I mean? Like there's some things you just don't get to apologize for. Like how you can you can, apologize like, for something like that? You don't. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you can apologize for ears. it, but the fact is, you did it. Right. It doesn't. Yeah. Like you know better. There, there, there's no sense of like, oh, I thought that was okay. Yeah. Let me just apologize. Like, no. 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 We'll leave it at that. We'll see yeah. what's up. I have no sympathy. Right? I agree. You play, you pay. Period. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shoei Otani just bought Adam Carolla's mission for $7.85 million. Mm. It's amazing. You know? And that, that his... Uh, is the house in good did... shape, or is it a bit of a gamble? I have no idea. Come on, Buff. <laughs> think about that. That's a good joke. Oh, I got you. Right. Okay. We'll go Thank with you. it. I'll give you Thank that you. one, TJ. Thank you. Thank you. Are you familiar with the Red Sox picture, Austin Maddox? Uh, yeah, I know the name. You do? Mm-hmm. He was just arrested. What did he do? Any child predator sting. Ooh. Pedophile sting. Ooh. Yep. Bar- uh, he was arrested during an any child predator-, predator sting that was done in Florida last month. Um, now he's facing several felony charges. Yikes. Yep, it was a big operation put on uh, by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Uh, five day what they call Operation Valiant Nights, and they targeted twenty seven men who claimed they were uh, they were communicating with underage girls online. Wow, he's only thirty three years old. Yeah, that's not good. Yep, yep, not a good thing. Three hundred thousand dollar bond. Again, you play, you pay. But I have no sympathy, none for that whatsoever. Ugh. Agreed. Uh, the new Mad Max movie, Furiosa, is coming out. All right. I love Mad Max movies. Never seen them. TJ, come on. I know you don't watch movies, okay? I know you didn't see The Godfather. I I'm know sorry. Kind of stuff. Uh, you, you never want me saw to lie The Road you? Warrior? You want me to you... lie? Yeah, I saw it. It's great. Oh, no. okay. No. No, I'm lying to you, Buff. I've never seen it. You never saw Road Warrior no. with Mel Gibson? No, Buff. No. I mean, it's not like I got to stop life and go watch it tonight, but it's like... Yeah. I, don't, I never had cable, and uh, we didn't go to movies. That one might have been out before I was even born. Um... And uh, we didn't rent movies, so if it wasn't okay. on like ABC's movie of the week or whatever, oh, I didn't I, see it. listen, not, that's okay, all good. Me just being the movie buff that I am. Sorry, buff. I wish okay. I wish I could help you out more in these situations. Trust me. Not a worry. Um, listen, that poker game I played on uh, YouTube. Mm. I'll post it up if everybody watches. On you know, everybody watches. But anybody out there listening, if you check my social media, Instagram or Twitter. I'm sorry, X. I still have a hard time saying X. I say Twitter. I can't help it. I'm old. Yeah, it just apparently. comes out. Tweet, Twitter, X. It's yeah. just, I don't know. It's yeah, kind of like do, saying do you know Magomedov tweets? versus saying Frank Trigg. You know, it's do like you, I need more more to talk about. Yeah, do you just post on X or do you tweet on X? I say you? I tweet, but I guess you can say I post. But I'll be posting and I'll be playing a high-stakes poker game on uh, Monday night where, you know, I did really well in the last one. So uh, check nice. it out if you want to watch. And last week they had a game, the same game in a different sense, which was a uh, karate combat game. They had on um, bodybuilder named Michael Hearn. They had on uh, Luke Rockhold, uh, Uriah um, Hall, Hall yep. playing against Phil Hillmuth. And uh, Luke Rockhold got second, won like $27,000. Nice. Yeah, good for him. Good for him. I asked him why they didn't invite me to that game. Um, I would have beat them all. Of course. It's okay. Of course. It's all right. Sorry. It was fun. I'm not in karate combat, so I guess that's it. But anyway, I'll be playing them. Then the next day, I'm going to go back, TJ, and uh, they have nine people playing, $1 million each cash on the table in front of them. $1 million each. Wow. Going to be a two- or three-day game. Wow. I'll introduce the players. Uh, they're going to do a lot of publicity for Puncher's Chance and uh, and this time Cologne. Well, go get it, Buff. Yeah. Well, I'm not playing that game. Oh. I'd love to play that game. I thought someone was uh, going to pony up for you. If I had time, I probably could have found a backer and, given, and been in that game. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm not going to put up a million dollars of my own money for that. I'm sorry. 
very. There's I, it, whether you can afford it or not. There's certain limitations. You got to be realistic. I feel My dad you. always taught me. He said, "Play uh, win, win like you're used to it. Lose like it doesn't bother you, and play with money you can afford to lose." Got you. So it's called a bankroll. Anyway, imagine that having a chance to win like about three, four million dollars in cash at a yeah. table. Come on, that's I, I think it's really cool. Well, if it's nine million across the table of nine players, you can win eight million dollars. No, that's in a tournament. Okay, this is oh, a cash so game. second and third gets everything. Yeah, I mean, guys might lose a hundred thousand or win a hundred thousand or win a million, but gotcha, I mean, if gotcha, you're not going to gotcha. like win nine million dollars, you're not going to take everybody's money at the table. Well, I mean, that'd be a lot story. more interesting to watch. Well, the World Series of Poker is coming up, and I just did the uh, check. Um, I could actually play the main event this year if I want to. Mm. Do it. Got to block out twelve days. It'd be great to do first prize, and that's like ten, twelve million. That would be really exciting. Is it still ten grand to get in, or what is it? Yeah, ten. Th- it's still ten thousand dollar entry. Nice to get in, but the nice. return potential. Last time I played it, I won like uh, eighty five hundred people entered. I went out about five hundred seventy, and I won uh, twenty eight thousand dollars. Nice. Yeah, Go I broke into pocket aces on the button again. If mm-hmm. you understand poker, yep. Guy had a pair of eights who played against me. He flopped quad eights. Mm. Took my whole stack. That's how it goes. All right. Those of you who understand poker understand what we just talked about. Those of you who don't understand the poker are <laughs> probably wondering what we talked about. Bottom line, it's a fun game. All right, TJ, that's pretty much it for me. What's going on with you? Anything happening? Yeah, I'm headed out to uh, Visalia uh, this weekend. I'm going to be calling uh, Uriah Faber's A1 Combat. Uh, in the main event, Uriah Faber takes on Jeff Glover in combat jiu-jitsu. Uh, sounds like it's going to be modified rules. Don't exactly know what it's going to be, but... Uh, we'll find out. It's live and uh, available for you on UFC Fight Pass. That's Saturday. Very cool. Memorial Day weekend. Everybody have a good weekend. Enjoy your barbecues. Enjoy your family. Um, I am going to be dormant this weekend. Probably go out of town myself. Further celebrate my birthday. Uh, next week is UFC Newark. So I'll be doing that. And then um, I'm heading out. I'm going to be doing a movie, TJ. Nice. Yeah, the remaking The Naked Gun. Yeah. All right. Yep, and you know, guess who's going to start in the in the uh, Leslie Nielsen role? As, as Liam Catholic. Neeson, I heard. I heard about this. Yeah, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. Yeah, yeah. it'll be so, interesting. I don't know pre- if his uh, personality profile fits that of Leslie Nielsen's, but uh, I don't know. We'll find out. He actually has a grand ability to do dry comedy. Yeah, I mean, he does everything dry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So I, yeah. I think it'll be a perfect choice. But we'll see. It'll be fun. I got to spend a week in Atlanta. Um, going to be down there with a couple other uh, individuals from UFC. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it yet, so I'm just going to leave it at that. We'll keep everything else a surprise. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I am too. I am too. And then mo- the moment I get back from that, uh, then it's off to uh, a week later, Saudi Arabia. Dang. And then big UFC fight week. Yep. Dang. And by the way, that Sphere show, I can't tell you what's going on, but there's so much prep for that show, even prep involving me. At oh, this wow. point, months before, All right. when Dana says he's going to spend more money than ever on that show and it's going to be a show beyond shows, aside from being probably a bit of a production nightmare, that's going to be staggering, that show. Yeah, I can't now, wait to see Do you think that they're going to show fights on the outside of the sphere? That would be something else. Or maybe, like, show me coming out doing the We Are Live, as the, you know, like uh, maybe UFC. I mean, you've got to bring attention to what's going on inside that sphere at that point. Yeah. Well, I mean... A lot of opportunities. I think you do more than anybody even understands. It's gonna be it's gonna be phenomenal. I mean, I was just looking at it from my my uh, hotel room window this weekend. It just still blows me away. It's like one of the wonders of the world. It is. It truly is. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, TJ. I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna go train for a couple hours and uh, get ready for what I don't know. But get ready. <laughs> All right. Well, go get it. All right, everybody. Enjoy your week. Have a great weekend. Happy Memorial Day. Celebrate. Be safe. And uh, when you set your goals to write them down, to walk on that yellow path road ahead, to achieve and and succeed in everything you want to do in life, just be the best you can be because then you're winning. And that's what we're all about. And it's time radio is winning. So big cheers and no fears forever, everybody. Have a great week. We'll be back next week. Buffer out.